Hi, I'm Clayton Turner, director of NASA's Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia. I'm excited to be here at EAA Air Venture 2022, where we're sharing with the world the aeronautics innovations that we're doing at NASA. <laughs> so you came up from Argentina for Air Ventures? Yes. yes. That's really great. So what's the most exciting thing you've seen here? Mm. I don't know. F-35, F-18. Yeah, okay. So okay. you ready to go in here and be amazed? Yes. yes. Yeah, let's go in here and be yeah, amazed. Right. Does he want to say hi to the world? You think? Hi, what's his name? Daxon. Daxon. You want to be a pilot? An astronaut? Or you just want this strange guy to get away from you? We're going to make our way around to all the booths. So over here we see folks talking about our Artemis mission. So this is where we're going to return to the moon to live and work so we can learn how to go on to Mars. What are you doing and why should I care? Why should you care? Why should I care? Well, we're so excited that Artemis is our return to the moon. We are going to launch the first woman and the first person of color in just a matter of years. And um, this summer, right now, our first launch attempt is August 29th, and we are going to launch the Space Launch System rocket and the Orion spacecraft. And we're going to send Orion to the moon, have it orbit the moon, be out there for about a month, test out all the systems so that we'll be ready to send crew in the next year and a half to two years. We're going to land on the South Pole, learn lots about the moon that we didn't know before, and have a permanent presence on the moon so that we can prepare for Mars. And Mars isn't the end. That's the next step to deeper into the solar system. And that isn't the end. It's warp drive to the next galaxy. Thank you. So I see you have some some young folks here, how you doing? What's your name? My name is Clayton, what's your name? Evan? Evan? So are you gonna be an astronaut, Evan? Yeah, or a pilot? I see you have an airplane there. Yeah, so tell me about your, you know how to fly that airplane? So tell us what you're doing here. Tell us how you're changing the world right here with everything you have. How are you changing the world? Hi, we are inspiring the next generation of explorers with hands-on science, technology, engineering, and math activities. All right. I'm going to get ready to fly, so everybody wish me luck. You think I can do this? Huh? Did yours work? Yes? You're going to put it in there? Go ahead, put it in there for me. Go ahead, put it in there. Yeah, put it right in there. There you go. Go ahead. You're doing it right. All right, look at it. There it goes. Yay! Yay! Great job. Great job. All right, thank you so much. So while we're here, in case you were wondering, we're going to interrupt this people. Does that face look familiar? Who's that guy? So tell me what you're doing and how it's going to change the world. All righty. Well, I'm a materials research engineer, and I work on developing materials for extreme environments. Specifically, I'm looking at materials to make gas turbine engines more fuel efficient and emit less harmful uh, emission products. So because they're more efficient and, and, and less harmful to the planet, what do I gain as a traveling passenger? Well, hopefully that... Uh, essentially results in hopefully cheaper airline tickets and also really helping the environment and really contributing to our sustainable aviation goals. So you're saying I'm going to save money and I'm going to have a planet to live on. Exactly. All right, I like it. Thank you so much. So so tell me what you're doing over here. Hi, so uh, this is the EPFD project and we're uh, sharing information on the technologies that we're demonstrating in the years 2024, 2025. So at NASA, we say things like we want to reach for new heights to reveal the unknown for the benefit of humankind. Yeah. How is that going to benefit humankind? Oh, this is this is like our first step toward progress on the sustainable aviation front. So we're reaching right here 10% less fuel burn. I mean, that's a significant amount. What we're going to do is we're going to make it less expensive to fly, yes. more efficient to fly, and we're going to do it in a safe way for the planet. Yeah. Yes. All right. So we're going to talk to these folks. They have this odd looking airplane over here and they're going to tell us why it looks the way it looks. The purpose of the X-59 is that it's designed to fly supersonic with a much quieter sonic boom. We're calling it a sonic thump. And so instead of shaking your house, the sonic boom from this, heard from the ground, will be closer to your neighbor slamming their car door about across the street. And our ultimate goal is to hopefully change regulations. We're going to fly it over different communities and see exactly what an acceptable sound level is to the public. 
and we're going to give the data to the FAA, and they can maybe make a commercial supersonic flight overland uh, legal again. And you can get to your grandmother's house in two hours. That's right. So this is a lady after my own heart. Being a brand new grandfather, I want to get from where I am to where my grandbaby is in a short period of time. And we're going to talk to somebody soon about when I get to the airport, I want to get there in a shorter period of time. So what you're doing is buying us time. You're investing in time for every human being on the planet because I'm going to get there faster, safer, and friendly to the planet. And I'm not going to wake up the cat, the dog, the children on the way there. So can I get a model to take home with me? Absolutely. Yeah. No, it won't survive the luggage, yes. Oh, here's the person I need to speak to. How's it going? So, we're here with some folks. They have this oddly colored helicopter and some robots around here. So tell me, Gary, <laughs> tell me how you are changing the world. All right, we're figuring out for the future of aviation, how we're gonna keep things safe when we have a lot more aircraft in the sky that are operating routinely, just like we have cars operating now. So how, how do we do things when you don't have a person there who's highly trained that's keeping things safe the way we do in aviation now is we capture a lot of data in automated ways, process it, and we verify that the vehicles are what they are and what they need to be every time they fly. If you fly a drone out somewhere beyond your visual line of sight and it comes back, you effectively lost custody of that aircraft. So you can't really trust it when it gets back because you don't know what happened to it. And in commercial aviation, we've never had that situation before. We always maintain tight custody and control of the aircraft. So we're building a system where you can automate the process of restoring your trust in that vehicle every time it flies. And that's what it's going to take to produce the levels of safety we're accustomed to. And parts, parts of that are using robots to do the inspections on the big aircraft. You can see a video here of what those uh, robots look like. We've also looked at what these big uh, cargo drones could do if they can deploy with their own robotic ground crew. That opens up new possibilities so they could operate where there are no people and never will be people. Maybe fighting forest fires or responding to disasters. So, so what Gary's describing is that how we're going to take what will be tens of millions of vehicles and there won't be an opportunity for a human being to walk and inspect that plane. And the economic drivers, if those planes can go out repeatedly, so what these robots are going to do is do that inspection so it can go out on the next mission and do it again so it can go out on the next mission. So again, an economic driver for the nation, but it also speaks to safety, speaks to wildfires, speaks to delivering packages, all those things. We want to do those more effectively and efficiently. And again, you'll see a theme here. We're making research in time. Now, speaking of making research in time, speaking of investing in the future of our nation, we're gonna meet a person here. Jennifer, tell us how you spent the last week or so. Yes, yes. I, am, I am honored uh, to be able to stand here with, with Clayton and briefly mention how I have made my trip to Oshkosh this year. I um, started the trip from Virginia, of course, moved into West Virginia to visit an HBCU in Bluefield, West Virginia moved into Kentucky to visit an HBCU in Louisville, a couple of summer camps in Louisville and Lexington, saw 92 students from kindergarten up through high school, and then wrapped up the day yesterday afternoon here in Wisconsin, up in Kashina, seeing the College of Menominee Nation, and uh, that's a tribal college here in the local Wisconsin area, and we are spreading the word that we want to recruit from the entirety of the U.S. population. That's, that's where we want to look for our future workforce. We're here at Air Venture 2022, and we're sharing our message with the world here at Air Venture. NASA is the place where we reach for new heights to reveal the unknown for the benefit of humankind, and we want you to join us.